What are artists making? Um, I am okay, wearing. Okay, so the hat is black and colors. Name? My name is Tom Sachs. And what's your name? My name is Angela. And are you an artist? Yes, I'm a bags and accessories designer. Awesome. And can we check out your art studio? Yeah, let's go. Perfect. Let's go. And what type of artist are you? I am a bags and accessories designer. So I've been doing this for over a decade professionally. And I would just say products, bags, all the beautiful things that you see like out physically is my canvas. So I love creating things that no one has ever seen before. And for example, something I've done is a tabletop lighter, which is amazing. It's an ashtray on the bottom. And this was so hard because the idea was this like, you know, gelatin molds, jello cakes, and how can we make this fun? And this is a project I worked with Edie Parker on um, creating together. Um, but yeah, like it's really fun and I really love what I do. Awesome. All right, so a project I did with Edie Parker, I was consulting for them. We designed a bunch of really cute um, tulip bags. It really started off as like this concept of they have been having this bag for a while and we've been talking about how can we make this different and I've been really feeling inspired because I think the base silhouette is very interesting I love this like handle and I felt like it would be really cool to have something on top and again when you're consulting for a brand it's all about what the brand wants so for Edie Parker it's mid-century aesthetic bold humor fun girly and I had to think in the lens of like, what would the Edie Parker girl want? So I came up with this concept of the Garden of Edie, which we have done in the past. And this is the first proto of how this came out. So you could see there's a lot of raw hems here. And then this is on top. You know, when you're going through it, you're seeing it for the first time. You're also getting more ideas of what you can do better. I've decided to make the flower its own shape. So now there's more dimension and then adding more filler on the leaves. So it really feels like, you know, it's, it's, it's a physical leaf. And then now we have the final production that's available wow. online. And this is also a completely different construction because we also talked about sizing. They also have an understanding of like how the product is selling. So we add a zipper on top, so there's more closure, it's easier to access. And I made this really easy to fit a wallet, a phone, your keys, and a small notebook. And I thought if I were to be going outside, I would want to fit all these things in my bag. Yeah. Um, I love getting inspiration from these like everyday pieces. I collect a lot of bags for inspiration. So for example, like I'm really feeling sequins these days and I just like love the detailing of how the sequin is sewn onto the bag and not directly. So there's like a little beading and then you have the paillettes. It's really, everything has a different purpose. Like I love the function of how many zippers they are. I love the drop on the shoulder and how this sits. So I really take notice on how does a product feel on me? And it's also a great way for people to understand my idea. So this bag I loved that I designed for Argon Ciel, which is a partnership between Les Forsac and Rowing Blazers. You know, they really were the leading brand for American leisure wear. Nylon bags were huge. So we really want to like revamp that heritage American branding bath. So when I designed this bag, I just like loved this thick webbing that felt like it's really a play on obviously like a simplicity utilitarian vibe and I really also want to bring like the girliness so all the things have this argon ciel, argon ciel webbing on top you have the branding zipper pockets up for your credit card because when you're creating something I have to know exactly what is this for who is this for and why are they buying it and I think about all these questions all the time when I see things where are people going what are they buying what is like the destination the purpose intention that is so important because that is what at the end of the day gives a product the value 
And for people that want to become a bag and accessories designer, what's uh, one piece of advice you would give them? I would say, honestly, first of all, have fun. See what's out there, what feels good to you. I totally fell into this industry by accident. I thought I was going to be a fine arts major, always done that growing up, going to like museums, become, you know, art history major or something. It seemed like a very interesting major to apply for. I had to sketch a bag and a shoe and I was like, I can do that easily. I had no idea what it meant and through school, I fell in love with it. So I studied accessory design major at FIT and I kind of just fell into it and then this is something that I think with time you will figure out what that means to you because everyone has a different perspective and there are so many things to make I personally think that to be in fashion you have to have a really strong point of view of who you are what you would like to be and how you want to see the world so if you can do that that will be amazing Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> and what's your name? Hey, my name's James. Nice to meet you, James. This is a very cool, I guess you would say like art gallery? Yeah, oh. yeah it's the U-Haul uh, gallery. The U-Haul gallery. This very is cool. our inaugural, inaugural show, first show we're doing. Wow. Um, something I've wanted to do for like years and years, but yeah. for some reason just got the courage to two weeks ago and got a bunch of friends involved and um, yeah, we're having our first show. So you want to come check it out? Absolutely. All right. Um, what would you say inspired this? gallery in particular the frustration with like real estate and being an artist in new york and just like what a, a grind it is and then i was like wait i feel like i've been to some galleries like you know like lower east side yeah. chinatown area i'm like these are like as big as u-haul like why don't we just rent a u-haul for 19.99 a day and just like do a show in it we can put it anywhere we can put it in the most expensive real estate in Manhattan. Sounds good to me. I'm going to check out the art, but cool. thank you so much, man. Yeah, it's very man. inspiring. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. And what's your name? My name is oh, Tom oh, Sachs. My favorite artist of all time. Thank you for your work. And I love uh, Bodega 245. Could you explain in a few words for people that might want to show up at this particular spot? Well, this is just for a few months. We're, this is my studio, but for the next few months, it's a community center. And we're opening up to artists that are friends and family that we've been working with for many years. Like right now, we've got this show of Mark Gonzalez Hot Mess. Absolutely. Uh, Mark's an old friend, many years, and legend. These are his drawings that are up. And there's a skate ramp, too. It's incredible, and I'm going to get a passport soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you for your work. Shout out to the community and you making this amazing space. And have a good day. Thank you. Well, we'll come back every Thursday night for the next six weeks. We'll have a different artist every week. Sounds so good I'm not going to say who. You got to find out. Come and see. What's up, y'all? We're out here in, uh, like, Nolita, I guess. And we're in front of the Tom Sachs Bodega 245, where uh, there's a new art exhibition from Mark Gonzalez as well. Yo, know, Tom Sachs is one of my favorite artists, so I'm at a loss of words. But yeah, check it out if you're around. It's at two, it's on Instagram at 245 Center Street, something like that. But anyway, check it out. And what's your name? I'm Kavan Kalal. Nice to meet you. And are you an artist? I am an artist. Cool. What Born kind of raised in Brooklyn? Nice. And what kind of artist would you say? Um, I tried to go to film school, uh -huh. and in film school, whatever that means, mm -hmm. meant I was trying to create a cinema that was local. Right. And I was already working with photography, and I had been for you know since I had started getting paid to do anything really since I was twelve, quite literally. And I, I just kind of fused motion picture with this into a, a storytelling kind of nice. narrative type of thing. And, what, and yeah. what would you say is a big topic within your art uh, that, that's pretty common? Point at that. Very cool. Uh, starting with 4x5 negatives. 4x5. Gotcha. My camera is 81 years old, so it's a big box and it takes these sheets. So as soon as I take it out and it's light out, this will start to print. And I was on my roof earlier, and now I'm going to wash them. Once they're done exposing, they look like that. Mm -hmm. And I drop them in this, which is this water. And the image comes out. Wow, see? I see it. Yeah. And all of these are like that. And last but not least, what's a piece of advice that you would say for someone that wants to be an artist to express themselves? Um, go back in time about four to ten generations and become generationally wealthy. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Otherwise, it's just work and work and work.
shout out to being oh. on the grind and maybe yeah. being a time traveler too. Perhaps. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been working on improving my outdoor photography. I found an incredible class on Skillshare called Outdoor Photography, See, Shoot, and Share the Beauty Around You by Minty. And it's helped me understand lighting, composition, you name it. Skillshare is also a fantastic platform for creative learning with thousands of classes led by industry experts in fields like film, design, productivity, and this summer I'm diving into new hobbies and Skillshare is perfect for it. Join me in this learning journey. The first 500 people that use my link in the description are going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Don't miss out. Start your creative journey today. And if you don't know where to start, Skillshare also has learning pads to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Handpicked classes meant to be taken in order that build on one another, reinforcing lessons. So once again, first 500 people to use my link in the description, get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's go. Join Skillshare today. We're at the Living Gallery at this really cool gallery spot called what was the show called? The Video Club. They're from the Global South. Uh, make sure you check it out. It's cool. Oh, you think you did? Nice to meet you. And are you an artist? I am an artist, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and what kind of uh, art do you make? What would you describe? I make, uh, I make, uh, I guess mixes of music. I'm a DJ, and then I create environments for people to like let loose and lose themselves and find God. I love that. And uh, lastly, uh, what advice would you give to an, a person that's trying to start making music or creating in general? I would say learn your tools and isolate yourself as much as possible so you can have a hope of finding your own unique creative voice. Like you can't do this, you can collaborate with other people down the line, but like you can't do this with other people like from the beginning. That's honestly what I think. Contrary to probably like popular belief. Yeah, I have a SoundCloud on Instagram at 4am underscore NYC. Awesome, thank you so much. Got it.